Jack. Mate in two. It would have been better to sacrifice your queen. I thought you were county standard. So did I. Must be rather embarrassing to have been christened George Bernard, Mr. Shaw. Not at all. It was perfectly logical. I was conceived on the night my parents saw Arms and the Man. You no doubt think GBS was a visionary socialist. Well? You'd be wrong. He was a realist, like me. His plays expounded socialism, freedom and equality and made him a lot of money. He was logical, like me. Like Chet. How did you become the best chess player in the world? By a perfectly logical sequence of events. I never had much time to play. I had become a successful provincial newspaper publisher by the application of sound business methods. Poor Norman. He's just out of hospital. I got my leader writer to attack the horror of street violence today. Shows you the value of sympathy, Jerry. Norman has now agreed to stock my newspapers. Yeah, he was a toughie. <laughs> I thought the slashed tires would be enough. <laughs> I'm not interested in details. Is that all? It's what we agreed. Yeah, but... But I had to pay the heavy a bit extra. And that's your miscalculation. I'll tell you what. I'll settle for that receipt. What receipt? For the garage business. You'd have got five years if I hadn't refunded the money you stole. Yes, I, I know, GB, and, and I'm very grateful, but... Well, that receipt's as good as a confession, you see. <laughs> of course it is. How could I possibly employ you for these little services if I don't have some sort of a safeguard? You can trust me. <laughs> Paula. It was our 10th anniversary. Hello, Frank. Why haven't you invited me? You'd be sick over the table. Funny how we've stuck together, isn't it? And gone our separate ways. I say, GB, do you want any fagging done? Not at the moment. Drink up. You'd better go out the back way. Paula was excellent value for money. I gave her a house, a horse, a Ferrari, and a clothes account. She graced my table and shared my bed. Although, after a time, we mutually deleted sex from the agreement. Success depends on logic, not love or sentiment. You wouldn't miss it. 10,000 for six months. What do I get for it? Be logical, Frank. Your firm's finished. You couldn't repay me. I could. I can sell up if I can keep the business going. I've cooked the books. The auditors are in. Come on, Frank, I'll give you something. You will? I have an excellent five-star brandy. It will make me feel much better.
Frank's killed himself. I expect that will be the verdict. I must see there's a good obituary in the Herald tonight. How much did he try and borrow last week? Ten thousand. Is that all? You haven't got the slightest twinge of conscience. No. He was lucky for a time, but he was weak. A gambler. He would have killed himself eventually. Why should he do so with my ten thousand pounds? You are a bastard. So you said when you married me. I uh, also said you were the most thoroughly sensible man I know. Logical. Logical. I congratulated myself on my calmness. But it was followed by a wave of anger, such as I have never known. I remembered when I was 11. My father told me mother had left home forever to live with another man. I didn't employ a private detective. He might have inhibited my future actions. I said nothing while I considered the problem logically. Paula had broken our agreement. She no longer gave value for money. Divorce? No punishment. She might even welcome it. Disfigurement? I couldn't divorce a scarred woman without incurring censure. There was only one solution. Fresh problem. I would be the obvious suspect. Bag? Bag? Hello, GP. This is an honor. I come to inspect the stock. I'll give you a good trade in. 14,000. Is that reliable? Reliable? Of course it's reliable. It's just been serviced. Where can we talk? It's a bit like the wholesaler. No problem. I want someone to do a proper job. Lubrication? Who is it? I'll handle it. All I want from you is a name and a telephone number. 
And on no account must you mention my name. Is that clear? Yeah. Yeah, that's clear, GB. I'm serious. I know. I know you are. It's... Well, it's just that it's a bit strong, isn't it? If you don't want to help, say so. How much? A hundred. And fifty. All right. Just for a name? And absolute discretion. Well, I haven't let you down yet. Can't afford to, can I? I'll... I'll ask around. Just a minute, Jerry. Is it for me? No, I just wanted to kiss you goodbye. You're getting sentimental in your old age. I must be. I must fly. Have a good day, darling. And you, darling. Yes, Jerry? Thank you, Jerry. Oh, and GB. Yes? Be careful. An irony that did not escape me was that my behavior was exactly that of the illicit lover. The concealment, the secret phone call. Hi. Jack Middleton. That's right. Jerry Wilde gave me your number. A friend of mine needs a job done. What are you talking about? Who are you? No names. I'll be yours, friend. Don't hang up. It's a big job, a lot of money. For what? My friend once. Somebody hit? Disposed of. Fifteen grand. Fifteen. That's much more than my friend expected. Please yourself. I must consult. The money wouldn't be payable until the job was done, presumably. Half no, and half when it's done. But that would mean trusting you with seven and a half thousand. Who's trusting who? I don't even know your bloody name. I couldn't stand being in someone else's hands. I decided to confront Paula, force her to give up her lover. But that weekend, we had another glittering party. She hadn't told me she had invited her lover. Peter. Peter Simpson, my husband. Smashing place. Come in. Through here, Peter. Oh, Anna. Forgotten I'd invited him. He hunts. He's a canning firm. I believe I've come across him. He's a bit of a bore. But I thought I'd pay him some attention. After all. They've never advertised with you, have they, darling?
People said it was a memorable party. I shall never forget it. <laughs> GB. Only my chessboard drew me back to the path of logic. GB. Hello? Steve? Jack Middleton suggested I call about a removal for a friend of mine. Well, who are you? No names. That's a condition. Yeah, so Jack said. Are you going to tell me the name of the subject, or is that a secret too? Paula Shaw. The Birches. Lee Lane. A woman? Does that make any difference? <laughs> I'm no gentleman. Can it be done by car? An accident? You've been reading too many books. Look, it's got to be certain. Simple. If I can make it look like a robbery, okay, but don't rely on it. When? One week after the first instalment. Hello? Yes? I want used notes, fives and ones. Drop it by a rubbish bin on the... No. If you want the job done... You can see me or check on my car. I'll call you at the same time tomorrow and tell you where to pick up the money. Of course, Jerry and the other two would know I had ordered the killing. Jerry dare not talk. The other two could prove nothing. The cash had never been through my bank. The police would find no motive. I knew nothing of a lover, did I? All I had to do now was sit back and wait. Seven days. The night the deadline was passed, I came home. What a day. I've been working so hard for you. Got you some advertising space with Peter Simpson. What do you think of that? It's wrong. Wrong? You look as if you've seen a ghost. Oh, it's oh. just some business deal. I'm beginning to wonder if I haven't been swindled. <laughs> swindled? You? I don't believe it. I've been getting no reply from a number all day. Could you check the line, please? The number is? Thelsby, 2660. And your number? 2425. Just a moment, please. That is a call box, sir. That's impossible. Thelsby, 2660? Yes. That is a call box, sir. The call box. 
Perhaps he didn't want you to know his name either. He said a week. That was nine days ago. How much did you give him? Two thousand. Two... Th well, have you checked with Jack Middleton? That's your job. He's your contact. Phone him. I want an explanation and I want it now. You sound like old Pawson. <laughs> I want an explanation. Uh, do you remember how I used to imitate old Pawson? <laughs> My school turn. I say, uh, you wouldn't have any of that lovely malt whiskey left by. What are you doing? Checking. Uh, hello, operator. Um, I've been trying to dial Sherford 3261, but there's no reply. Yes, I'll, I'll hold. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a call box too. What's going on? You put me in touch with Middleton. You must know him. Yes, of course I know him. I know him very well. Who is trusting who? I don't even know your bloody name. Yeah. I know Steve quite well, too. It's got to be simple. I want to use nights, fives and ones. There. Yeah. You took the money. You'll return it now. Two thousand. Seven and a half. Hey, you told me too. Hey, I bet you'd have cheated Steve out of his second half, wouldn't you, eh? You owe me that money. I owe you. I've always helped you. Kept you out of prison. Yeah, and made me sign statements you'd have a hold over me. Don't you think I enjoyed being your fag? I've always hated you. She hates you too. But I wouldn't try and do anything about it. Because I'd have something very interesting to tell the police. I've been waiting all my life to get something over you. For change. That is how I found the time to concentrate on the game. I became champion here. Then, every month I started sending chess problems to the world champion, challenging him to solve them. He is never able to do so, since he never replies. The only logical deduction from this is that I, George Bernard Shaw... Time for your medication, GB. I. George Bernard Shaw. 